Hey guys, Chris Fix here with the 8th annual Top 5 Christmas Gift Ideas for Car Guys and Car Girls like you. Check it out! Now this year, just like every other year, I've come up with some really helpful gift ideas for anybody who likes to work on cars. And not only are these gift ideas helpful, but they're tools and products that you probably don't already have in your toolbox. That way you could give an amazing gift or you could get some gift ideas for yourself. And I'll be sure to link all these gift ideas down in the description and the pinned comment to make it easy for you guys to find. And none of these tools and products are sponsored. Everything here is stuff that I like to use and I think you'll find helpful. So with that said, I'm really excited. Look at all these gifts. I'm like a kid on Christmas. Let's get started and open these gifts up. Now real quick, before we open up all the main gifts, I've been working on something super special I know the kids are gonna love. So let's open this up. All right, how to change the oil in a car by me. And this is actually the second children's book I've ever published. The last book, How to Change a Flat Tire, became the number one seller in children's books and the number one new release on Amazon last year because of the support from the car community. You guys sent me tons of amazing pictures and stories about how your kids loved the book. You left hundreds of amazing reviews. And this book still sells a bunch of copies every day, but I'm excited to introduce the new book about how to change your oil. Now I'm just gonna flip to a random page so I don't ruin the surprise, but this book's all about a father and son changing the oil in their car and just covering the basic steps. It teaches kids that cars are not hard to work on and hopefully it'll get them excited about cars so they could join the car community like us. Now both of these books are designed for kids 12 and under, but I know plenty of adults who bought them and love them. And the best thing is each of these books sells for $9.99 still, and it ships anywhere in the world Amazon is available. And to be completely transparent, the cost of printing books has gone up, but the price stays the same. This year I make less than a dollar per book, but it's not about the money, it's about getting kids involved in the car community and hopefully getting them excited about cars. So this is a great gift for the younger generation, and with that said, now let's get started opening up the first Christmas gift idea. All right, let's see what we have here. And check it out, a neck light. So for this year, I'm proud to present to you the Chris Fix 300 lumen neck lights, and these are absolutely incredible. Now I'm working directly with the company that owns the patents for these neck lights. They're an American company, which is great. I met them at SEMA, really nice people. And they make most of the neck lights on the market. And I'm doing this because I wanna make sure these are high quality for you guys. And I'm not kidding when I say they make most of the neck lights on the market. They do make a more affordable set, which is nice. You don't have to buy the most expensive one, but it takes AA batteries, so it's not rechargeable and it's not as bright. Milwaukee has their own version, a little bit different of a design. It uses a rechargeable battery in the back here that you could actually remove. It has a two and a half hour battery life on high, and these are 400 lumen lights instead of 300 lumen. But you could only wear this on your neck. You can't wear it on your head. And then we have everybody's favorite snap-on version. Again, very similar to mine. The only difference is gonna be these come off. And that's actually pretty nice. I do gotta say that is a nice feature because they are magnetic. You could use them and point them around that way. Again, another nice neck light. Now with mine, these do not come apart. They are rechargeable. It's 300 lumens. They're independently adjustable, so you could adjust them 90 degrees in either direction. And they have power buttons right at the top here. You press them, it turns it on, you hold it. It'll dim it down to 60 lumens, so you could get nine hours of battery life. Or if you want, you could just have it on full brightness and you get three hours of battery life. And you have the same neck band technology, which allows you, I mean, I wouldn't do this to yours, but you could bend this all the way back and it's not gonna snap and break. It'll go right back to its shape so you can wear it around your neck or wear it around your head. Now something that I think you guys are gonna ask about because I had this question myself is what's the benefit of wearing a neck light over the typical headlamp? And that's a great question and my biggest answer is gonna be you could wear a hat, you could wear a respirator, you could wear a construction helmet, you could even kind of wear a welding mask with a neck light but you can't really wear it with a headlamp and it's gonna be a little hard for me to show you but I have an idea. How to get here. What's going on Jamie? Hey. Do you mind modeling these real quick? Oh, I can do that. Okay, so as you can see, the lights go around your neck like this, but besides your neck, they could go around your head like a headlamp, and then wherever you look, the light's gonna shine. You could also wear it with the hat flipped around. It also works with a respirator, as well as a construction helmet. And finally, it even works with the welder's mask. Okay, let's get your hat back on. Thank you very much, Jamie, I appreciate it. Can I try the finger thing? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so now you know how to wear them. Let me show you how they work at night. All right, it's pitch black out, no moon, no street lights. Let's try this out. There is one light and there is the other. And as you can see, it is 
plenty bright working under the hood if you wanted to change a belt, change a hose, check fluids, whatever it is, you have tons of light under here with both neck lights on. And although these neck lights are great for working on cars, they're also great for tons of other things, like walking your dog at night or taking out the trash at night. Even my buddy's goats like them because it helps them see better in the dark and makes them more comfortable. Look at how excited that little guy is. Kidding aside, the neck light allows you to use both hands since you don't have to hold a flashlight, and that makes it great for stuff like fishing. Now you can easily change out your fishing lures. And check it out, I even caught this small bass while filming with the lights, you know, for research purposes. Be free, little guy. And finally, it's great in a group because it doesn't blind people as you're talking to them. If you don't care about the engine and you acknowledge that we're gonna ventilate the block, so I think you get the idea. They're very bright and there's tons of uses for these. Now, if you do have any problems at all, there is a warranty card with a number to call. They have a one year warranty and I've done my absolute best to price these competitively for you guys and any profit I make from these lights is going straight to charity. Also, instead of using Amazon this year, I wanted to support a local small business. So there is a father-son team out in New Jersey. They have a tool store and I'm doing all my distribution through them. So if you're gonna order these, please order them quickly so they could get to you by Christmas. That way it's a win-win for everybody. You guys are gonna love these lights. I can't wait for you to get them in your hands or around your necks. They're very useful and that's exactly why they make the list this year. Now after the main gift idea, I like to do a smaller, usually less expensive stocking stuffer. They don't really fit in the stocking anymore. Some of them do, but some of them definitely don't. But I think you get the idea. Just something simple, something small, something that is great addition to what I just showed you. Okay, so let's see what our first stocking stuffer is. All right, a stick light. And what do we have in the other box? <laughs> I had a feeling, another stick light. Now I realize we just finished talking about lights, but this stick light makes an awesome stocking stuffer. You wanna make sure that you get the model with the LC at the end. I'll be sure to link this exact model in the description so you don't get them confused. And the reason why you want that LC is because it comes with this magnetic wireless charging pad. Check this out. So this right here is my ultimate light setup. Once you're done using your light, you just pop it right on the magnetic charger and it's charging away. And if you want, you could easily grab another one without having to plug it in or unplug it. And it's that quick and easy. And I use a lot of these lights all the time. And I'm not kidding when I tell you I have a lot of their stick lights. Here's just some of them. Now real quick, let me show you the charging base. In this case, I have it held on by the magnets that are built into the back and they are strong magnets. This works great for stuff like this electrical panel here so I don't have to drill any holes or your toolbox. You also have four screw holes if you wanna drill it into the wall. Now the charging base is a great feature but it's only as good as the light that it charges. And don't worry, this is an excellent light. The first feature I wanna show you is the magnet on the bottom. Just in case you don't have something magnetic, there is a hook, but the magnet is really nice for working on cars. That's a four pound hammer. It lifts it up, no problem at all. Now, the brightness of this light is hard to see during the day. Like, it looks pretty good, right? But what does it look like at night? Well, let me show you. Boom, and I was not kidding about how bright this light is. And if you want, you could use that magnet and it holds securely to the hood of the car or wherever you wanna connect it to. So as they say, the proof is in the pudding. You have plenty of light under here to do whatever work you need to get done and it will last about three hours. And if you wanna dim it a little bit, it'll last even longer. So that's exactly why these stick lights made the Christmas gift list this year. They are absolutely amazing. Oh man, this is a heavy one. Okay, now this is actually a pretty cool idea. It's a hitch vise. So this is the only vise I could find that came in a case, and that's very important. I'm gonna show you why in a second. Now this is a trailer hitch vise, so it fits directly into any two inch receiver, and it comes with a pin to keep it secure. Now this is a Wilton branded vise, and they make really nice vices. So the handle to open this vise is smooth, and the tolerances feel really good. And this opens up pretty wide at about five and three quarter inches. Now another really good feature of this vise is when you close it all the way, if your handle is facing down like this, this would be bad to drive with. If you're driving along the trail or off-road and something grabs onto this, you're gonna rip off your rear bumper or your vise or whatever. You're gonna cause damage. So instead of loosening your vise or just keeping this facing down and risking the damage, you just pull this out and then you could spin this to any orientation that you want and it locks in place. Such a smart feature. Now besides your normal flat jaws up here, you have your rounded jaws down here which is designed to grip pipes. And as we close down on it, you can see how the shape of the vise contours to the shape of the PVC. That way you have more grip on it. Now let me quickly show you this hitch vise in action. 
Now this was also a very well thought out idea. They spaced this vise back away from the bumper. That way when you're sawing, it doesn't hit the bumper by accident. You have plenty of room. Okay, so with that cut, the last thing I wanna show you is the anvil. And you can see, you can really hammer hard without any issues. Now that's exactly what any vise is designed to do, and it worked just as well on a hitch vise. Now once you're done working for the day, you can easily slide this out of the hitch, throw it into the carrying case, and this is why the case is so important. Now you have a secure place to stow it away in your car or truck. That way it's not just rolling around. Now while this is super nice and it comes in the case and everything, it's an all-in-one package, it is a little pricey. So there is another option for you guys. It is a cheaper one, but it's cheaper both in price and in quality. So it does connect just like the other vise. And it's pretty much just as secure as the other vise. It's a little bit thinner of metal. The powder coat isn't as good. And probably the biggest feature that I don't like is this does not lock in place. So when you tighten it up all the way, it's gonna hang down no matter what, which is not good if you're gonna drive with the vise on. And the other big feature that this doesn't have is a carrying case. It seems simple, but now where do you put this after you take it out? You just have to throw it in the back of your truck without a carrying case. It's just going to roll around. It's just, the case makes a big difference. Now, if you could make it happen, I do recommend the more expensive one. It has better features. It's higher quality. It's just nicer overall. It also comes with this mounting bracket, which is nice because this you could mount inside your garage. Just put it on one of your workbenches. Then after you're done using it on your vehicle, you could take it home and then put it right onto your workbench. So this is a very useful tool. Anybody who gets one for Christmas will love it. And that's exactly why it makes my gift idea this year. All right, stocking stuffer number two, what do we have here? Okay, a wrench extender, and what's the other one? Okay, and it's another style wrench extender. That's actually a good idea. All right, so we have two different style wrench extenders, and both are great tools to have. So how this works is you put this over the end of the wrench, and it literally extends the wrench, so now you have a lot more leverage to break those nuts and bolts free. Now I have a perfect example of where a wrench extender could come in handy. So I'm removing the old AC compressor, which is broken and just dead weight, and in order to remove it, I need to get this fastener loose to pull the pulley off, and as you can see, if we try to get our ratchet down here, there is just no space. So since a ratchet won't fit down here, you're gonna go for your wrench, and the problem is the wrench doesn't have a long handle, so you're able to get that wrench in there because it's nice and thin, but if you try to loosen this, it doesn't loosen because you just don't have that length to give you leverage. Now, a little trick that a lot of us do is we grab another wrench and we slide the closed end over the opened end like that, and then now you kind of just extended your wrench. The problem is it's very easy for this to slip, and then you could bust your knuckles. Don't ask me how I know that. And I'm sure if you guys have done this, you know that as well. So while this does work, it is a little sketchy. So instead you could get your wrench extender, get it right on your wrench like that. And now this locks into place. So you don't have to worry about busting your knuckles and look at all the leverage. Look at how easy that was. So now with this broken free, you could easily loosen this the rest of the way. And that is exactly where one of these wrench extenders comes in handy. Now another example of where a wrench extender comes in handy is this right here. So if I'm trying to get my ratchet on that bolt right there that holds the bearing in, let's just say I'm replacing a bearing, you can see the axle is in the way so I can't really get it on there. Now you might be able to space it out a little bit over here, get an extension and have it out here. That would probably work. But I'm just trying to show you a quick example of where you might grab your wrench because there's plenty of clearance with your wrench but you have no leverage to, to loosen this. There's no way I'm gonna loosen this. But that gives me the perfect opportunity to show you how the other wrench extender works. It just connects right to your half inch ratchet right at the end here, just like that. So slide it over the wrench so it locks in place. And then now use the leverage you have from your ratchet to break that bolt free nice and easy. So this is a great tool to have. They're very helpful in certain situations. They're not expensive, and that's exactly why they make the stocking stuffer list this year. All right, moving along with gift number three. Let's see what we got. Ah, oh, no way, a flare camera. So this is a really cool piece of technology. This is an infrared camera that uses thermal imaging to help you diagnose car problems you can't see with the naked eye. Now this FLIR has two different cameras. We have a visible light camera and an infrared camera. Here's the visible light camera and this is showing you basically anything you could see with the naked eye. And here's an infrared camera which is turning heat into an image. The purple and blues are for the cooler temperatures and the white and yellows are for the hotter temperatures. Now the problem with infrared is it doesn't give you a sharp image by nature. So they combine the images 
images of the two cameras, that way you could see more detail. So you could get a pretty good image on this thermal camera, but there is no screen, so you have to use your cell phone, and then you have to go onto the app and connect the camera wirelessly like that. So let me show you how awesome this is for diagnosing cars. So right now the Del Sol is losing battery power overnight. There is a parasitic draw. Something is draining the battery when the car just sits. So how do you figure that out? The conventional way is to grab your multimeter and I'm not gonna get into the details, I have a whole video on this, but basically pull each fuse one at a time to see what causes that amperage to drop. But if we use our thermal imaging camera, check this out. It becomes clearly visible very quickly where the parasitic draw is coming from. And it's coming from the radiator fan relay right back here. When relays go bad, they could get stuck closed and there's enough current running through them to kill the battery overnight, but not enough to turn on the radiator fan, so you would never know just by looking at it. So that's the perfect example of a really good use of thermal imaging. So I have another really useful example with my pickup truck. It's diagnosing a misfire. If you take a look at my pickup truck, you can see there is a slight miss. You see the vibration there? And that miss only happens at idle, and as you increase the RPMs, it goes away. So what's causing it? The check engine light's not going on, so when I scan the computer, it's not telling me which cylinder it is. Well, we could use our thermal imaging camera to check the temperatures of the exhaust gases and the manifold. Let me show you. So we'll get this down here, and you can clearly see here, all three cylinders are firing because we have a bright white and yellow color. That means they are all very hot. So cylinders one, two, and three on this side are all consistently hot. You don't see any variation, so I'm pretty sure it's not that. Now, if we come to this side, we have four, five, and six. Let's check our exhaust manifold down here and see what we got. Look at this, this is such a good example. You can clearly see that cylinder number four, the front one, is cooler than five and six. Five and six are nice and bright white or yellow, but cylinder number four is a cooler orange, so we know that is where our problem lies. So that's just another example of how thermal imaging could help you diagnose a problem. Now we know cylinder number four is our issue, so we could check timing, we could check spark, and we could check compression to see where our issue lies. But we diagnosed it very easily using one of these. Another use for thermal imaging is checking on heated seats to make sure the coils are all working properly and they're heating up to full temperature. Same thing with window elements. You could use this to spot a bad heating element in the rear window. And finally, you could use this for around the house for plumbing problems, like finding a clog or even finding a leak without ripping out the walls. You could also use it to check electrical systems, like the breaker panel, to see if any circuits are drawing a lot of power. And then finally, you could use it to diagnose HVAC problems. You could use it to find insulation leaks, or in this case, check this out. If you look back here, you could see we have moisture building up, which is cooler. And I would have never seen this with the naked eye, so I need to get this fixed before it gets moldy. And I think you get the point. There's a ton of uses for thermal imagery. I just scratched the surface. And with that said, if you have any uses of your own that you could think of, let me know in the comments because I want to give it a try. But that's exactly why this made my list this year. There's a ton of uses. It's very helpful. And I know anybody who would get one would love this. So let's move on to the next gift. Okay, so Cooper's going to help me out with this one. What stocking stuffer do we have here? Yeah, Cooper. Okay, I'll give you a little help. Nice, we have a wrench set. Now this overdrive wrench set from Craftsman isn't a normal wrench set. It has two features that are awesome. One, it helps you remove rounded nuts and bolts. And two, these wrenches are longer than the typical wrenches that come in a regular set. Let me show you. You can see the silver wrenches are your typical wrenches, and then the black chrome ones are the overdrive wrenches. Now, although the difference in length isn't that much, it's only an inch or two, every inch counts because the longer the wrench, the more leverage you have, and the easier it is to remove fasteners. Now, what really makes these wrenches special is the end of the wrenches that grab onto the fastener you're trying to loosen. Now, on a regular wrench, the open-ended side is flat across all the way on both sides. But on the overdrive wrench, you can see there are ridges on this side, and also there is a little hump right here. So these ridges allow the open-ended side of this wrench to grip up to 50% rounded fasteners. Now on the closed side of the wrench, you can see the overdrive has a six-point design versus a 12-point design. I personally like the six-point better because you're less likely to round a fastener. But even more importantly, there's those ridges again on three of the surfaces. And these ridges allow you to remove up to 70% rounded fasteners. Let me show you. So surprisingly, I had a difficult time finding rounded fasteners. I had no shortage of rusted fasteners, like this one right here, but it's not rounded yet. So don't try this at home. To make this rounded, I'm gonna use a file and file this down. Actually, we're gonna grind it down because I wanna make sure this is really round. All right, and let's use our normal wrench to test it out. Yeah, that seems pretty rounded to me. And I can hear the comments already to make sure it's rounded. Here's a six point socket, and I'm pressing down to make sure it sits flat. Ah. <laughs> 
All right, so now let's try the overdrive wrench and we want to get it on there and see if there's a spot where it grips. Okay, and look at that, she is loose. And if you look closely, you could actually see how the ridges grab onto that rounded fastener. And just like that, the bolt's free. That's impressive. So you know what they say, the proof is in the pudding, and I honestly didn't think I was gonna get this off. It's pretty rounded, and this still grabs onto it, which is impressive. So there you go, that is the biggest feature, removing those rounded fasteners, or even preventing them from getting rounded to start with. And that's exactly why this makes my stocking stuffer list this year. All right, almost done. Only one gift left after this one. Let's see what we got. All right, a vacuum fluid extractor. Now, a vacuum fluid extractor is a must-have for anybody who likes to work on cars, and this one is excellent. It has two different methods of pulling a vacuum. You could use shop air or an air compressor right here, and that'll pull a vacuum, or you could do it the old-fashioned way, and a couple of pumps, and listen to this. Plenty of vacuum to pull out whatever fluid you want, including gear oil, which is pretty impressive. Now this extractor comes with three different hoses and it has a really nice feature here where you have a pour spout to make it simple to remove all the fluid that you collect. And then finally, the last feature I wanna talk about is the thicker base. So they put a thicker plastic in here so the base doesn't crack because that is a very common problem on the cheaper ones. And also the center of gravity on this one is pretty low compared to the taller ones. So this one won't tip as easy. So you can see this is a pretty good one. Let me show you how useful this is. So let's say you wanna change out some of the transmission fluid in your vehicle without dropping the pan. Just pull the transmission dipstick and push the included hose down the dipstick tube until you reach the bottom. Then just pull a vacuum, and this is sucking about two quarts a minute, which is a lot quicker than you realize. Now once you remove all the transmission fluid, the vacuum is gonna keep sucking air. That way when you remove the hose, it won't drip, which is nice. Now just get your funnel and add however much transmission fluid you just extracted. And that's all there is to a quick transmission fluid swap without any hassle or mess. This also works very well for bleeding and flushing brakes. Now I did need to buy a more flexible tube to fit over the bleeder valve, but once it's connected, just crack the bleeder valve and then pull a vacuum. And you can just see how dirty that brake fluid is, and that's exactly why I'm flushing the brakes. Check out that difference. Then all you need to do is close the bleeder valve while there's still vacuum. That way you don't get any air in the brake lines. Okay, one last example. I need to change the power steering fluid in the vet, and the vacuum extractor makes that simple. Just take the cap off, and then push the hose all the way to the bottom of the reservoir and pull a vacuum. And just like that, all the old power steering fluid is removed, and then we could add our fresh new power steering fluid. And this is a simple thing to keep your vehicle maintained. And then finally, once you're done changing out all the fluids, this is super easy to empty. You just take this adapter off, and now you have a nice pourable spout so you don't make a mess. And you can see how easy this one is to drain. I have another vacuum pump that's a pain to drain, and because of that, I don't even use it anymore. So there you go, this thing is very well made, it's super useful, and I'm sure you can find even more uses, which is exactly why it makes my list this year. All right, Cooper, what stocking stuffer do we have here? Go ahead, pull it off. Good boy. And check it out, it's an oil mat. Now, oil mats are a must-have for anybody who works on their car at home. Let me show you why. So how the mat works is it slides under the car before you change any fluids. And since I learned about these, I use them every single time I work on my car. That way I don't have any spills staining the driveway. And just to show you, we have a bunch of different fluids here I'm gonna pour onto the mat. First, we have some 5W30 motor oil. Next, we have some gasoline. Then we have brake fluid. And finally, we have some coolant. So as you can see, all the different fluids have absorbed into the mat and they are locked in. And if we take a look underneath the mat, you could also see it is bone dry and that's because of this plastic backing. Now, anybody who likes to work on a car the day that they spill any fluids and they're using this mat, they're gonna be super thankful you got this for them, which is exactly why it makes the list this year. Okay, our last gift idea and it's a big box. Oh man, no way, I've always wanted one of these, a Viper chair. So I have three different models here to show you. This is the Steel Max, then we have the Low Pro, and this is their newest, least expensive model, the Steel Sport. Now these Viper chairs are so nice. Think of them as the Rolls Royce of chairs. They are one of the nicest, maybe the nicest ones on the market. And I constantly see these getting compared to cheaper chairs. Now don't get me wrong, there's no problem getting a cheaper, more budget-friendly chair. They get the job done, and they're more affordable, but there's just no comparison. Now this is the caster on a Viper chair, and this is the caster on a budget chair. Look at that difference. 
The bearings on this feel absolutely amazing for both this and for the wheel. That feels good and smooth as well. The wheel itself is made of a rubberized plastic, so it feels good when you roll on it. Everything is zinc plated. The fasteners are grade five and grade eight, which is overkill. I mean, you do definitely pay for it, but the comparison, you can't even compare. There's, it's not even fair. And just look at how the better casters roll more easily across the rough concrete. Now for the budget chair, well, it's gonna need an extra push. And the next thing I wanna talk about is the cushion on the seat because it makes a big difference if you have a nice cushion. So on an inexpensive chair, the cushion is a cheap thin foam. When you press down on it, you could feel all the way through the foam to the metal backing. Now on the higher end chair, you could see the difference. The foam is thicker, you can't push all the way down to the metal. It's more supportive and it puffs back up and doesn't leave an indent. Plus this is pretty comfortable to sit on. And finally, the Viper chair has a thick powder coating on all the metal surfaces and the budget chair has a painted coating. So a work chair like this is a great gift idea for somebody who works on their car, and if you could splurge, I highly recommend the Viper chairs. They're made in America, you saw the difference in quality. They're gonna last a lifetime. You'll be able to pass them down to your kids' kids, and that's exactly why they make the list this year. Okay, Cooper, the last stocking stuffer for the entire video. I hope it's a good one. Okay, okay, an adjustable oil drain pan. Now, if you're using one of these oil drain pans or an old baking pan like this to drain the oil in your car, you definitely need to upgrade to one of these. Having an easy to use, mess-free oil catch pan like this makes changing the oil that much quicker and easier. And I've been using this exact pan for years and it's great for basic oil changes like this or like this. And the funnel is big enough for situations like this where the engineers don't think about the maintenance. It's also good for manual transmission fluid changes, transfer case fluid changes, automatic transmission fluid changes. It even catches the drips from messy filters. And you could use it like this to drain gear oil from the rear end. Now what really makes this funnel great is the height adjustment. Let me show you under my truck. So with a normal drain pan, you could see how far it is from the oil plug, and that's just gonna make a mess. Now, you can slide some wood under here, and that's gonna help a little bit, but now it's a lot less stable and could tip over. And realistically, it would be better off if it was higher like this. So with the adjustable height funnel, you could add one of these extension tubes, or two, but that's just a little too high under here. So in this case, we're just gonna use one, and now the funnel is right near the oil drain plug. This also has a vent cap that prevents the oil from gulping and splashing everywhere. And now when you drain your oil, you have a nice stable catch pan that's mess free. Now another really nice feature is this right here. There is a grate on top of the funnel. That way if you drop your drain bolt in, it's not going to fall into the catch pan. So you never have to worry about dropping this and losing it. So let me get the oil drain plug back in here and tighten it down. Now for storage, the funnel part snaps right into the side. And my only problem with this catch pan is these two attachments have nowhere to go. And finally pouring the old oil out is easy and mess free and the plastic cap that seals the catch pan fits tightly, it doesn't easily strip when you tighten it down, and it doesn't leak like some of the cheaper pans. So this is one of my favorite oil catch cans. It makes changing oil easy, mess-free, and quick, which is exactly why it makes the list this year. So there you go, those are my top five Christmas gift ideas for car guys and car girls like you. All these gift ideas will be linked down in the description and in the pinned comment to make it as easy as possible for you to find. If you guys do end up getting one of my children's books, please leave reviews, it's very helpful. And if you end up getting the neck light, definitely tag me in any photos and let me know what you use it for. I love to hear about it. As always, I hope the video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button. And I wanna wish you guys a Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah. And if you don't celebrate either, I wanna wish you a Happy New Year.